sorry, uh, Workplace 30. Uh, chapter 3, we're starting, 3.1. Uh, we're talking about uh, statistics. Now, statistics, you guys know about statistics, right? When, we, uh, uh, when you take stats on something, hey, okay, statistics, they're actually numbers that measure certain things at certain times. If you're taking stats on a sports team, you're marking down how many times you know something happens either on the court or on the field or on the ice or whatever and you're, you're taking stats, shots on goal or uh, turnovers or you know yards uh, on a play or whatever you're, you're writing down numbers that represent the quantity of the things you're observing okay so in statistics we can examine statistics to notice patterns uh, we can also get a uh, sort of a read on or we can describe a set of data based on uh, certain measures of central tendency. So in these th these three right here, mean, median, and mode, uh, how many of you remember mean, median, and mode from previous grades? Do you remember hearing about them? Or are these brand new, that you think? Okay, so you, you probably should have heard about these before. I think we talked a lot about them in grade nine, which is a while ago for you guys. But uh, uh, these are called measures of central tendency. The mean is actually the average, okay? So the mean is the average. The median is the middle number, and the mode is the number that appears most often. So we'll talk a little bit more about each of those as we move through this section. But these are called measures of central tendency. So you get kind of an idea about the group based on these numbers. So for example, if we had a, a, a math test and the average was 85, then that kind of gives you an idea of you know, what that class is capable of. If the average is 65, you have an idea that that the, the marks for those that class was a little bit lower, and so it kind of gives you an idea of how they how they would be doing or how they would be performing. So um, organizing data. So let's just review this. In this section, you'll often have to organ often have to organize data in ascending. So that is uh, order that is going up. Okay, ascending, going up, or descending, <laughs> that is going down. Using a stem and leaf plot is a quick way to organize the data. In a stem and leaf plot, you organize the numbers by tens and arrange them in a table. Okay, so example one in your, in your workbook there, write the following numbers in ascending order in a stem and leaf plot. So if you take a look at your second page, I'll make this a little bit bigger so it's easier for us to read. On your second page, um, here's the solution. So a stem would be sort of like the tens, as they mentioned. And then the leaves on the tree or the leaves on the branch would be the ones digits. And um, you could take each number and you could quickly put uh, the tens together. Just take a look at the tens. How, well, we have, you know, there's um, a three. This one has zero tens. There's a 12. That one has one. Uh, there's a 20. That has two. There's a 30. That has three and 40. And then 100. So that's 10 ones. So if you see that list, you, you quickly can find out how many stems you need to put in your chart. And uh, put them in order, ascending order would be nice, right? Because that's where we have to put the numbers at the end. So put zero at the bottom and, uh, sorry, at, at the beginning, at the top of the list, and 10 at the bottom, and put them in proper order going down. And then you just fill in the ones as you come across the numbers. So we'll do an example here. And... Um, Let's do uh, build your skills number one. Let's do that. Write the following numbers in descending order. Use a stem and leaf plot. Okay, so let's do this on the side. Stem and leaf. All right, and we want to look at. Uh, let's look at the largest numbers first. So we have these are looks like they're all in the hundreds. Okay, so let's put. Uh, let's see. The largest number I can quickly see is 155. Looks like. All right, so I need to put a 15 here because I have one five, right? Or is it one five? I have one four, and you can go down from there, one four, and then you could go one three, one two, one one, one zero. Whether you have numbers that fit in here or not, it doesn't matter. You can <coughs> just throw those on your chart. So now what we do is we go to each number, and this is one one two, or 11 and then a two, right? One twelve. So one one, so you put a two right here, right across from the eleven. And if it's easier to make rows, that's a good idea too. You should have lines in your paper, so this is a bit easier for you maybe. Okay, and then we have one two nine, one twenty nine. 
So that's I'm going to put a 9 right here then. You see how I have a 1, 2, 9. 1, 4, 9. So on the row that has the 14, I'm going to put 140 and I'll put a 9 there. See that? Is this making sense? <coughs> okay. And you just keep going along. 1, 5, 5. So I'm going to put a 5 there. 1, 4, 2. Okay, so now I'm going to put a comma and a 2 just to separate that a little bit. And then 1, 2, 3. So they're going to put a 3 there. 1, 2, 2. So you just keep filling in the chart here. 1, 1, 5. 1, 4, 5. 1, 4, 4. Put another one on the 14 there. And then 1, 1, 3. Okay. So I didn't have 1, 3 anything. Does that make sense? Does that look right? Yeah. And I didn't have 1, 0 anything. Okay, so that's fine. If you put those in there, that's totally, that's totally great. No big deal. You can quickly check to see if you missed anything, if you want, by counting the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then count the, the numbers that you put on the right side here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So if that, if that matches, then looks like you've probably gotten everything. Okay. Now, in descending order means I need to start with the largest one. That's why I put the 15 on top. So I'm going to write this as 155. And then I'm going to go down to the next row and I'm going to pick the largest single digit on this side. And I'm going to go 149 is next. And then 145. And then 144. You see I'm just, I'm just picking off the largest numbers here. And then 142. And I've got all the 150s and the 140s now. Those are all counted for. Then I go down, no, there's no 130s, so I'll just skip that. I have 1, 2, 9 is the next largest number. 1, 2, 9. And 1, 2, 3. Okay, and so on. 1, 2, 2. And then I go down to the 1s. One 1, one, one the largest number on the right side in that row is 5. Then 1, 1, 3. Then 1, 1, 2. So that should be descending order, and that's organizing it in that stem and leaf plot. Does that make sense? Any questions about that, or is that easy? Good? So-so? Good? Yeah? Okay. All right. So again, this is another one, stem and leaf plot. Now, with this one, we might want to um, organize our stem and leaf plot a little bit differently. So this is heights now. So I, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I think that it would probably be a good idea to organize the stem as the feet and then the leaf as the inches. Okay? We want to go from shortest to tallest, okay? So on this one, what's the shortest? Well, d we have uh, some five-foot uh, heights. So let's go five. There's not going to be too many of these rows, right? There's going to be some six footers. And then there's going to be, is there a seven foot? Yeah, there's a couple seven, seven footers. Wow. So that's going to be the feet, right? <coughs> or the stem is going to be like the feet, and then the leaf is going to be the inches. So. And this, the, the nice thing about this is that you don't have to search for the smallest number first. You just go along from the first number, and then the second, then the third, and just put them in your table. So this is six foot two, so I'm going to put a two here. Then six foot five, I'm going to put a five there. Oh, then five foot nine, and so on. See that? Eight. So you can go ahead and finish that leaf plot, and then write your numbers in order. I'll give you a minute to do that, okay? So there you go, on number two, that's what it should look like. You finish your stem and leaf plot and then just kind of go in order from smallest to largest through the rows. And then once you've got all of them written down, you should have them in the order that you want. And this is in ascending order, from shortest to tallest, that's ascending. Getting higher, ascending. Any questions on that? All right, so this uh, next section here, this is now where we get into these measures of central tendency, as I mentioned before. So measure of central tendency. One of them 
is the mean. Okay, so an arithmetic mean is what they call it. Another name for this is the average. Really, it's kind of like the average. So average height, average length, average time, average test score. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about an arithmetic mean. So an arithmetic mean, down here on, the, on, your, uh, on your paper there on the right, the sum, you find the arithmetic mean by taking the sum, that is adding up all of the values and then dividing them by the number of values that you added. And so this is just one of the, mean, the central, uh, sorry, the um, measures of central tendency. So to find average, you add everything up, then you divide it by the number of numbers that you added up. Okay? It's, re it's, it's really easy. It doesn't matter the order so much. We do have to order matters uh, a little bit later, but right now order doesn't matter. So if numbers are listed, um, so for example like this right here, if the numbers are listed, they can be listed in any order. And in order to find the average, so this is the number of goals that Raina's soccer team has scored uh, in the last 10 games. So these numbers here, what you do is you simply add up all of them, that's shown right here. You add up all of them, and you divide by how many numbers you added, divide by 10. And that number is 3.3, .3. so that's the average. That's the average goals per game. The symbol for mean is this right here, and it is X with a bar over top of it. And we call it X bar. That's the math uh, way to say that, X bar. So it's the sum divided by the number of them. The sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, oh, was there another example there? I don't think so. Okay. Pretty easy, right? So let's get some practice here. 3A. Really simple. So to find the average, that is the X bar there, X with a line over top of it, we simply add up the numbers. 3 plus 7 plus 12 plus 8, plus 6, plus 0. Make sure you uh, yeah, add all the numbers, including the 0. I know it might seem a little silly. But when you start to count the numbers, if you skip the zeros, you might not count all the numbers. You might forget and only divide by the numbers that aren't 0. And, and you want to make sure you divide by the total number of these things. Because 0 does count. It counts in the average. So how many do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so the average should be, now you can do probably some of this in your head. <coughs> let's, do, let's do it in our head here, some of it. 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 12 would be 22, plus 8 is 30, plus 6 is 36, plus 19. Ooh, 36 plus 19, that's pretty tough. Although if you think about it, 36 plus 20 is 56. So 1 less than 56 would be 55. So 55 divided by 7. So, and you can certainly um, write a, show a decimal point for the decimal number for the average is totally great. 55 divided by 7 is 7 point, and we'll just go 7.9. Probably one decimal place is good. So does that look reasonable? Maybe tough to tell, but between all these, somewhere around 7 is an average. If you look at those numbers, that looks pretty reasonable, I guess. Okay. Now, I'll skip B because that's, that's pretty easy. But C, let me talk about C. Um, make sure you add the, uh, keep the signs, right? So this would be X bar for C, 12 plus 7 plus negative 2 plus 3. Now, if you add a negative, like negative 4, it's kind of like subtracting. So you could just write it like that or like this. So this right here, adding a negative and just plain old subtracting is the same thing. So just make sure you add the right signs, okay? Don't change them all to positive, thinking it doesn't matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So again, divided by 7. Okay. Some more work with mean there. Okay, so that's a start to the, the build your skills there. I think this should be pretty straightforward. So what I'll do is I'll get you to take the next uh, uh, little chunk of time here and uh, finish up to the end of question number five, okay?
finish to the end of number five, and we'll see if we go any further yet this class. And let's take a look at example three. You just finished this uh, 3.1 part one off. And uh, example three is a different type of example where instead of finding the uh, mean, we're actually trying to find a missing piece of like missing one of the numbers to get the mean. So this is what an example would look like. In one game, a football team has offensive drives of 45 yards, 43 yards, 24 yards, 21 yards, and 44 yards. The coach wants the team to achieve a mean of 35 yards per drive for the game. What must the length of the next offensive drive be if the team wants to meet this goal? So you have to kind of sift through the wording a bit here, right? It can be a bit tricky, but what you have is this, is you have a list of numbers plus one more, okay? So all of these numbers plus one more and it's unknown. So that's where we get this list of numbers plus one more, which is unknown. You see that? So the sum, or the, sorry, the average is 35. So that goes right here. See? 35. So this is how you set this up. You fill in all of the spots that you know. So we know that the average wants to be 35. There are one, two, three, four, five known drives and one unknown drive. That's a total of six. So we're setting up our equation with all of the givens in there. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, okay? When you add up all of these numbers right here, you get 177. And how do you add an unknown number to it? Well, you just show plus x, just like that. Now what we want to do is we want to solve for the x. So I want to get rid of all of the other, other numbers. So how do I get rid of a divided by 6? Well, I multiply by 6. When I do that to both sides, I get this. And if I want to get x all by itself, I take away this number from both sides to get x all by itself. So that's where you subtract 177. Now, this is algebra. This is something you've uh, done before. You may not be confident with it but we're going to do uh, a question together so that you can kind of see how it's done. Okay, so let's do number six together. And we'll do one that's just like the one we just did. So in this question, it says, in one week, the mean number of passengers through a transit trans style turnstile per day is 1,290. Okay, so that's the mean. So 1,290 is the mean. The table below shows the number of people who pass through the trans turnstile per day. I can't read. Turnstile. Now, Sunday is unknown, isn't it? Sunday is unknown. So the question says, how many people pass through the turnstile on Sunday? Okay, well, let's, we can figure that out pretty easy. Pretty easy. This is the average. So we add up all the numbers that we see. Okay, and you list them all here. And and then plus x at the end. Sorry, I can't. You can hardly see that, but plus x at the end. And we're going to divide that by. There should be a, a seven days of the week, right? Okay. So now you take the time to add up on your calculator all of these numbers right here. And then we'll, we'll do that next. Okay, so let's take a moment to do that. All right, so th these numbers added up is 8,102 plus x, all right, divided by 7. So this is set up exactly the way we just did our previous example. So how do I get rid of this 7 now? Because I want to get x all by itself. This is what I want to end up with, right? How do I get rid of the 7? Times each side by 7. I love it. Okay, that's perfect. So multiply this by 7, and I'm going to multiply this by 7. So these 7s are going to divide out. They're going to be gone. One on top, one on the bottom. That makes a 1, and it's gone. So I'm going to be left with 8,102 plus x over here. And then 1, 2, 9, 0 times 7 is 9,030. Awesome. So what's the next step to get x by itself here? I... Do I divide something? Do I multiply, add, subtract? What do I do? So if you divide the 
Well, okay, so divide both sides by 8,102. The problem is, is that this 8,102 is actually just added to x. You see that? So I don't want to divide. Good, I mean, that was a good idea. If it was multiplied together, if they were two multiplied together, we'd, we'd divide. Um, but uh, what we do is we just subtract 8,102 from both sides. And that, then, should get rid of all this on that side, you see. And then this should be our answer. So 9,030 uh, minus 8,102. 928. 928. So that, this number right here should give us this average if that's what was on the last day. Okay? Alright. Okay, so that's 3.1 part 1. I will ask you to continue on and um, what I'd like you to try and have done is up to, so 1 to 8. 1 to 8 for tomorrow. And I actually, I might give you a little bit of time tomorrow to do uh, 1 to 8, okay? So maybe you could try and do, you know, 1 to 6, at least. At least 1 to 6. Well, I just did 6. Yeah, try and do 1 to 8. Try and do it all. I think you can do it. Okay? And maybe you have some questions from before you weren't quite done. So try and get all the way up to this point right here, okay? That's where we're going to start tomorrow with the median and the mode. So 1 to 8, that's your goal.